All right, just wanted to give you a little break of the content so we can come in at a different set of content here. So uh, moving on now to a little introduction about me and my history in studying genetics. Uh, I got my undergraduate degree at the University of Dallas in Texas. And after that, I was looking for jobs and uh, I was interested in biology. I wanted to get some experience doing biological research. And so I got a job as a uh, research technician. So sort of an assistant in a research laboratory. And they happen to study yeast genetics. So yeast are fungi, they're also eukaryotes, and they are a model organism, as we'll see in our lab portion of this course, a model organism for how cells divide. So this is just a schematic of the cell cycle, single cell getting bigger, dividing into two cells and so on. So the process of one cell uh, dividing itself over and over again. And the genetics of this, the genetic controls, because yeast are eukaryotes, their signals are very similar to the signals that our own cells use. So if you learn about how a gene works in yeast, you can apply that to humans and learn more about our cell cycle. And it turns out, uh, you notice this is the place I worked, the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle. Uh, this is a place that studies cancer overall uh, using sometimes model organisms. So the ability for a cell to divide successfully is tied into cancer. One of the reasons that cancer happens is that cells uh, fail to stop in the cell cycle if they have a mistake in their DNA repair. So uh, along the way here, there are checkpoints where the cells can say, wait, I made a mistake. I better fix that before moving forward. Uh, if, those are, if those checkpoints are broken, that's one of the uh, reasons people can have cancer developing. And we can notice that uh, the genes responsible for those checkpoints in yeast and find out how they're behaving in uh, humans who have cancer or healthy humans and so on. So I learned a lot about, uh, during that lab experience and I went on after that to go to graduate school, wanted to get a higher degree. I felt like I was capable of a little bit more learning. So I went out to graduate school at the University of Connecticut I uh, got my degree in ecology and evolutionary biology, and after that, ended up back here at UW-Whitewater. I've been here since 2011, so almost 10 years in now. Some projects that I've undertaken that relate to genetics, uh, one we have published this year, very exciting. I had a lot of students working on this, uh, studying a plant called Phragmites, or common reed. Uh, this is a plant that exists as a native species and a non-native species in Wisconsin. The native species are highlighted in this orange or light orange color and the non-native in blue or gray. And uh, we just a study to find out basically how these individuals are, uh, how they're related across populations and whether there were say any pockets of specific genetic diversity that were worth uh, protecting in the native species or watching out for in the, the non-native species. Uh, no big conclusions from that, but a lot of fun to kind of map where these plants are in the state. My research that's been kind of a little more uh, of a common theme for a longer time is uh, molecular phylogenetics. So this study, you can use molecular phylogenetics, this basically builds phylogenetic trees. Uh, I've studied plants, that's my background and uh, use the DNA sequences for genes of plants in this group called nymphoides, the floating heart aquatic plants, uh, use their genes to find out how species are related to each other and to uh, infer how they got to be where they are in the world today, uh, how they got to be the way that they are, so evolution of features and so on. Uh, lots of interesting questions we can ask with uh, this field of molecular phylogenetics. If any of you are looking for research opportunities, I take on research students in my lab. I'd be happy to talk to you about opportunities for research. Uh, if you are a biology major, this is something that can satisfy a graduation requirement for you. And I'd recommend uh, exploring this early on in your career before you get too close to graduating. It would give you more time to do research uh, and to really choose a project that fits you as, as well as possible. So let me know if you're interested in research now or you just want to kind of talk about it later in the future. So normally at this point in the class, I would take a little pause and ask people to think about what they're interested in. Uh, lots of aspects, basically whatever you're studying in biology, you can tie that into genetics without a whole lot of extra work. Um, and the genetic 
tools these days are getting really widespread. So just knowing about DNA, uh, knowing the, the ability of, of using techniques in the lab, uh, those are all valuable skills that can land you jobs. So uh, the content that we teach in this class, the content that you cover in lecture, uh, all really good for getting you poised for jobs that you might want after graduating. So feel free to talk to me about jobs that you're maybe considering, and I can talk to you about how to prepare better for those. Okay, so a little introduction just to the uh, logistics of the course. You have a textbook for the course. Uh, I follow the textbook content rather loosely. Uh, I, I don't want to say myself what the textbooks is saying because I feel like me saying their words is not as effective as me talking about genetics in my own words. So you're going to get from the lecture content in these recorded videos, you're going to get sort of my take on the topic. And I strongly recommend reading the textbook as well because it's got its own take on the topic. Uh, you might find mine easier to digest. You might find the textbook easier to digest. A uh, big advantage to the textbook is you can keep revisiting the same passages. So if uh, something's not making sense, you can go over it again. Um, it's got lots of different ways to approach the material from uh, chapter outlines to uh, questions and problems related to the material. So there's a lot of material available to you. Uh, I would suggest try to find the, the way to approach the material that makes the most sense for you. So uh, obviously check in with me if you're not, uh, if you feel like you're having trouble getting a sense of the material. Um, but before you check in with me, I, I would say, maybe I just recommend uh, trying to do your work to uh, use other sources to see if you can make this make sense for you. So the readings in the syllabus go along with the topics that we're going to cover uh, during the lecture. So uh, there's some associated reading with everything that we're going to do and a uh, good way to boost your knowledge by getting it from two sources. Uh, I don't really do extra credit, but I do have a feature called help yourself points. So I named them that because basically I'm offering you points to do something that I feel like you should do anyway to help yourself. And it's a variety of different things you can do. Uh, overall, there are up to 10 help yourself points over the semester, and there's a maximum of one per week. So they're stretched out to basically to encourage you to keep participating uh, through the semester. If you are meeting with us in person, or I think if you're maybe live with us on WebEx, you'll be able to uh, chime in and ask a question, answer a question, those are worth help yourself points. Uh, you also can email me a question or an answer to question. You can start a discussion on the Canvas uh, page, contribute to a discussion, uh, lots of different opportunities and lots of ways to earn these points. And uh, hopefully by participating, you'll get a, a better grade overall. Uh, that has been the trend. So if you look at this, this is a map a uh, chart of the number of help yourself points that a person has on the x-axis and their uh, average exam score. So overall, the people with more help yourself points did do better on exams. People with fewer help yourself points did a little bit worse on exams. Uh, I'd like to think that just the act of participating might have made some of the difference there. Uh, also found out that we have a uh, scheduled a dedicated tutor for this class. So you'll have the opportunity to go to tutoring sessions. I think those are through WebEx. Uh, you also can contact the tutoring, uh, tutoring office and uh, set up an appointment with an individual student who can help you through these topics. Uh, I mentioned the textbook before. Basically, the information is the same information, should be the same information, no matter what source you get it from. And uh, I would encourage you to just get the information you find the most useful or the, the best way to present that that makes sense to you. So uh, the supplemental instructor, the tutor that goes along with our class has experience working with my class and helping students make sense of the material that I cover. And I think that's one of the better ways to uh, make sense in the material if it's not making sense to you to begin with. Okay, so to start you off with help yourself points, you can actually earn some help yourself points by completing your Canvas profile. Uh, there's an opportunity to upload a photo uh, that would help me to learn your names, especially if uh, those of you coming to class are wearing masks and those of you who are participating remotely might not be visible to me. Uh, this is a good way for me to get familiar with you. Uh, let me know, there's this uh, quiz on Canvas that's called About You. 
you can fill in just a little bit about how comfortable you are with the topic and uh, maybe how you want to advise me on giving you content you'll find interesting and useful. Um, you introduce yourself at any, in any way, really, you get your first help yourself point uh, for the first week here. The late policy, I have this on here, but I just want to point out that it uh, will be relaxed a little bit this semester. Just everybody's going to have a lot they're working on. Uh, overall, you know, a single day is not the biggest deal, but I, I do want to encourage you to keep participating on schedule. So if you pile up a lot of assignments that you haven't done, uh, that's going to really get you in trouble later. So uh, I don't know, I'm saying in general terms that uh, late assignments won't be penalized as strongly, but uh, we're talking only about, say, like an extra day or so. So please don't get too far behind. Uh, you will be penalized. Your grade will be penalized. If you have uh, circumstances that are causing you to turn things in late or to need to take time away. Uh, we don't know what the semester is going to bring and I want to be understanding about uh, whatever comes up in your life that makes learning a little bit more difficult for you uh, or keeping up. So please let me know if something like that has happened to you and, and I'll work with you on it. Uh, otherwise I will be expecting everyone to turn things in on time. All right, so we have a lab associated with this class. There are two lab instructors. I'm one of them for you, and the other one will be Dr. Kriska. So half of you will work with her, and half will work with me, uh, scheduled for labs to happen on Wednesdays. Your first lab will be next week, and uh, those can happen online or in person, as you have uh, discussed with your lab instructor. And uh, there's a separate grade for the lab, but the grade from the lab gets folded into the lecture grade. So you'll get one single score, a letter grade for your class, um, but it's going to be made up of your performance in lecture and your performance in lab. So get familiar with your Canvas website for your lab section and uh, stay up with whatever your lab instructor is advising you about what to do on that. So uh, some of what you'll be doing for the lab Canvas page will be these reinforcement quizzes and those are due before lab and there will also be some uh, videos to watch before you get to lab. So just a little heads up on that. All right, so that's it for the introductory presentation here. Next time we'll get into the meat of uh, the topic. We'll start getting into some specific examples. So let me know how you're doing and I hope everyone has a good week. We'll see you next time.